Listen, man, you're now tuned into me, 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 me. Million dollars, dollars worth, worth of game. game. Listen, yes, man. Sir. We out here, Cherisport, Louisiana. It's going down. Human Harmony, we yeah. getting 50 cent. We getting straight to the business. Yeah. It surprised me, 50, when I was in jail, I called Gil one time. Uh -huh. He said, man, these out here blackballing me. It wasn't to years when I came home uh -huh. when we ran into people that was like, yo, I remember we got a call from Universal. I remember we got called to say, don't do this in that third. Uh -huh. Did you ever run into situations where people attempted to blackball you during your career and you ran into an exposed who done it? No, nah, absolutely. Like, like my, the, the entire beginning of my career, I was up against the leverage of Murder, Inc. And that energy already created relationships that I didn't, look, I didn't people because they had already dealt with them. So my whole beef with Fat Joe was really his loyalty. Later, we become the best friends. Like, like I really His loyalty to a default. Like, because he worked with him, he like, nah, I already saw him with them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, even when you look, I bring it to right to today's time. When you see, like, NBA young boy in Little Dirt, and issues, and they, they got extreme going on, right? But when it happens, NBA young boy will be away. So Dirk has an extreme advantage because he's actually out moving and meeting people. So you do something later and you go, oh, it, you ain't, we ain't on game time, like that's not what we're doing. But you still gotta be conscious of street because it's street. You can just be oblivious to it in the streets. I'll catch up with you and eat you like breakfast, man. Like it is what it is. So you look and you go, nah, that's like when you reach out to Dirk, to Drake, and you go, nah, I fuck Dirk. You know, everybody young boy wanted to do something to that day. You said what? You said, I wish that anybody said something in my face. I was coming, you know, like, yeah. like it would have it was spent on him just because of that. And you look and you go, nah, what what it happened is you left that gap. Isolation is dangerous. You know what I mean? And you look and you go, look, I love not just, I love the culture, bro. It's what made me comfortable in my life. Like, you know, all the accomplishments, the successful moments that I have, that I can hold on to. My grandfather just passed, right? He got a chance to see that shit, though. I can't, the most expensive thing we spend is time. We can't get it back. Did you spend a lot of time with grandpops? I did, I would go over there, hang out, I would make my business to go out and have like a, I don't take a break, if you don't notice. Yeah. I just keep going. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they, they'll go, I would stop for him every year and do something. And it's because he sacrificed so much for us that it would actually be what I need, because I'm relaxing, but it's for him. Yeah. You know, and then even renewal vows, different stuff with my grandparents and stuff like that. And I, I would make it my business. My grandmother, they went to the justice of peace. They didn't spend money on the day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They simplified it. And then when, when, once she got into it, it became like, I watched her turn into a little girl. And she was like, no, I can't have this kind of flyer. Like, if you can't help me, then get somebody else here to help me because this shit ain't the way it's supposed to be, Jerry. Like, my aunt, Jerry, they showing her this shit old, man. And it's like, look, I want to say this right. Tough is not. It's never what you said. It's always what you did. Right? So we know tough. We know people who do this shit. But it usually leads to them living a tough life. Okay. It starts a cycle of tough shit. And no matter how tough their act is, they do some brazen shit. They get ready to go to the home of the boldest. So they're going to be around to do that. That's what they did when they put you in the... They classify you and put you in on as bad as you are. Yeah, absolutely. And then you gotta show us you're tough again. This is gonna extend your stay. You know what I'm talking about. Yes. So it's, it's going down. Tough is not my goal, man. I don't care about that shit, bro. You know what's gangster to me? It's to live the way you wanna live. To not have to answer to people to change things because of how your perspective and the way things are. Our culture's so strong. Bro, when you look at high-end shit, if we don't wear it, it don't sell. Right. It will not sell if we don't wear it. Right, we control cool. That, completely. Yes, we always control cool. Right? Look, when you see Yeezy, 
Adida, that's not the first time we saved Adida. The first time, Run's house. Who's house? What? Yeah, Run's yeah, house. Shelter Adidas. They get back to being in their space, doing extreme amounts of sales when Yeezy's over there. I didn't understand what he was doing. He went to LV. I'm like, what the f is wrong with They're not even going to pay you. He didn't get no money. I made a boatload of about $80 million for RBK. I'm a high risk investment. Just pay me short contracts and keep paying me. When they gave us the money, we really exist based on the loss on the bidding war for LeBron. RBK had $80 million laying there when Nike got LeBron for 120. If that money wasn't sitting there, Paul Feynman wouldn't have did the lifestyle brand and they brought Daddy Yankee and Jay-Z's and Stock Carter and G-Unit shoes to the, to the table. Like, we wouldn't have received that opportunity. You know, and then, look, LeBron, that's why I say we owe three, boy. Like, we, if that didn't happen, they wouldn't have had the money laying there for me to go get it. Yeah. So he, he knows, I know. LeBron James, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. All right, and you'll see the connection because people disagree on so much yeah. Your publicist, when you talk to your publicist, you know the first thing they tell you? What? Stay away from religion, stay away from politics. Okay. You know why? Why? No matter what the f you say, somebody passionately disagrees with you. Absolutely. No matter what religion, you believe in Allah, then you're saying that's not the right way. You believe in every Christian, Christianity, that's not it. Because they're choosing something different. Your political party, you, you, the Democrat, Republican, a disagreement completely. Yep. So I stay away from it. When I, when I get pulled into politics, I go, yeah. and I have nothing to say. I'm just that's looking. the same way we are. We don't f no politics, nothing. I don't f with that. Like, I don't stay there because I'm still entertainment. If it's not music, then it's film and television, but it's still entertainment. So why would you turn someone off by saying that? Right. I want everybody to enjoy what I'm doing. Right. Not just a selective view, amount of people. I'll focus on diversity because it's needed. Right. Yeah. You know, and I want to see my people look the right way. I want to see the right shit. Not just two B movies, nigga. Like the best shit. Right. High quality, high budget films. How would it feel being a legend in two games? Like Deion Sanders, Bo Jackson. It's great. Look, like I'm music just getting and started. television, yeah. you hear me? I'm just getting started, I promise you. Look, when I look, when I go up, when Tyler invite me out to see the studios, I look, I go, I really, people don't know how much he's doing. Even though we've seen the projects as they come out, they don't know how much the inner workings of it is, like how much it is established, right? So I'm looking going down, like, no, I respect it in every way. Like, for, for me to see you with Tyler, that was major, but who is five major black people in the entertainment game that gave you game during your journey? Five black people, five monsters. Look, Master P, out the gate, and then P showed up. Well, I, was, I was trying to explain to you, but P is like, he's so much of a hustler, he, he was there in the very beginning, and he, he could see that I was going where I was going. There's no room to do the deal, but there's room to, to do a deal, a deal. Mm -hmm. So you can already have the record there and, and you can know that he's getting ready to blow. Yeah. And there's no reason why you don't get into giving him a deal for two multiple months. shows. Yeah. When you know he's gonna increase yeah. in volume. He did a few, broke, we take a break, we come back, we'll finish the rest up. Right. By the time you get back, it's worth so much more that there's no way you lose money. Right, right. He was sophisticated enough to understand how to do that. Some people feel jerk. I honored the deal because I didn't feel jerk. I learned from it. Okay. If you go, oh no, that's what, I'm like, oh shit, nah. I see y'all nah, that, that was it. Yeah. Cause I had sold 1.3 million records before. The, now you know how many good didn't get their run. They didn't have their moment. Right. We know the difference because we are the culture, bro. We in it like we, when we got writers and shit like that, we listening. Bro, you know how many rap from Philly did was Nice, like super. He was nice. Yes. Oddly talented. Nigga. So when you watch him playing basketball and shit like that, all the other shit, I'm looking like, Snap really was supposed to be in the NBA. He just was really around now with us, with all this other shit. That's why I 
Look like it's a. I keep, That's your favorite move. Fucking around with a little. Right? That's what I'm saying. I'm looking going, what the f Like, look, we see this only when you gotta put you gotta put it with someone who's clearly had that as a focus in their life for you to see them do anything that, that looks similar to that. Yeah. To him. And that, that was because it's not complete focus. Of course, it was other things. It was other things that came. But you can see where your passion is, the person's passion. Is. And then the showmanship, you can't you can't make that up. That's the personality and shit. If they knew to do that, our superstars in the league would be too much to not stop looking at them. Right. Absolutely. Do you understand what I'm saying? We would Absolutely. just be like, nah, I don't care if he if he make the shot or not, I'm with him. Right. Right. Because it's just too much for you to, you know, if a person's character is that that strong, like when you look look at Kobe, I look at Kobe Bryant. I'm Kobe Bryant here in music because I'm not that good. I wasn't that good naturally. In what? I watched it in rap music. Some rap like we talk. They so good at it, you look and go, God damn. But the problem is they look at them and say, is that real? Right. Is you really doing that? Right. Because we try to figure out if they really like that. Right. Okay. I look and I go, but that sounded good. Where the said that? Crazy. But yet the difference is you was believable. Right, and because the lifestyle, I'm actually giving right. them right. what was going on. But do you think that matter now? It does. Look, they up because they try to do it without having experience. Okay. These don't, there's no seven years in between what they just said. Mm -hmm. No statute of limitations. They're saying some that just happened last week, bro. Yeah, right. And then the people come and they don't understand what happened. The whole oh, crew. What the fuck? Uh-huh. You see the little lineup. Uh -huh. There's 10 coming out the building. Mm -hmm. The indictment done fell. It's the drill. You see it over and over. But but they're writing about the experience. And they is real. Like this nah, shit is real. Like their version is, is really capturing it creatively in a way. But they get confused. The streets always a part of our culture. So if look, there's an expiration date on this because. If you was what you said you was, you were supposed to crash. Yeah. Right. You were supposed to crash out. So if you're not, if you're still here, if you're not going through some shit, you're supposed to be absent at points because you're sitting in the jail. Right. Then you come back. I used to pray for times like this to shine like this. You have to have those moments for them to understand, no, this shit is real. And then it's not something that means something from the artist's perspective alone. It's how many, you, that's you. I used to pray for times like this, to shine yes, like this. Yes. Now you Lamborghini duck. No, no, I'm saying to you, but that's oh, that's a lot of it, bro. That's a lot of people's lifestyle, so it's so relatable, it connects in a way that's different. We know it's his actual experience, and it was why he's writing it at that moment. That's what makes it connect culturally. And you're going, and it's one of the young boys, yeah. But let me finish this, I gotta, cause I wanna know, I said, who is five black people that helped you in the game? Number one, you said Master, Master P. P yeah. Who else? I learned from P. I learned from Russell Simmons early Russell, on. Russell, who else? And Russell was because he, he showed me that you can take influence from music culture and make it affect urban apparel. Yeah. He showed me Fat Farm. Fat no, Farm no was Russell, all Soho. No yeah. Fat Farm, no Sean John, no, D, no Rock no Wad, no, none of that right. shit comes right. from music. Right, when he, when he done that, I, I knew I could do that. And if you watch Wankster, I already had clothing with G-Unit written on it. I'd already had tank tops that were just hand painted. Cause I know I'm going to that next. I'm gonna sell that, I'm gonna do all this, I'm gonna do all this shit. I already was thinking that ahead of time, dude, cause I've been bumped around enough. My first album is really, I did Power the Dollar. That's the first record. How much of a concept change from power of a dollar is Get Rich or Dodge Ryan? Get Rich or Dodge Ryan is what? It's power of a dollar after you've been shot and you pushed out of the business and they're blocking you. They told you they was blocking me. Right. If you go look back at the interviews, they're saying we was blocking them in every way we could. Right. But how many, how, how many people that, who blocks you that most people would be shocked about when you found out that they sent a, a direct hit to block? They have relationships. I'm talking about Urban, they have relationships with a lot of people. They have relationships with Jay. They have uh, but who? They all was, they, I had this energy that had, the, that whole system, I had an issue with everybody that was there but had a, 
you gotta understand. understand. You gotta understand. The whole thing. You gotta understand, cuz. At this point, 50 hit. Ja Rule and them niggas here. They, they, they was selling more They records. see you coming up, they but was, not in a million years that they think a nigga was gonna strong. sell 10 million records. So, it's like, we gotta pick a side. Yeah. We gonna pick this side, that cause side this side is already, already winning. It's already winning, it's already proven. My neighborhood is picking a side. Premium is picking that over what we really are. Right. This episode of Me and Osworth a Game is brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka. Now, you know the slogan. Life ain't going your way. Shot of New Amsterdam Vodka. You caught your woman cheating today. Shot of New Amsterdam Vodka. You thought that check was coming and it didn't come your way. Shot of New Amsterdam Vodka. It's distilled five times. It's filtered three times for you know what? That clean, crisp finish. You could drink it straight up, on the rocks, juice, soda, or just make a classic New Amsterdam mule. That's up to you. But when you out and about at your local liquor store, you make sure you scoop you up some of this New Amsterdam vodka, the NAV. Make sure you get you some NAV ASAP. The official vodka of Barstool Sports. And what are we talking about? I mean, a great time. Great for pre-gaming. Great for, you know, right before the boxing events. You know, whatever you're into. New Hampshire Dan Vodka. Put this in your life. Right? This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by DraftKings. Now, we had an appetizer last week. Now it's time to feast. College football is back. Don't miss any of the action. Jump in at DraftKings Sportsbook. It's full slate of games for week one, including a big matchup in Atlanta between preseason number one and number 16. Also, uh, Colorado. I'll be in the building. Shout out to Coach. Yes, Colorado Buffs. We will be in the building. So this week, make sure you get ready. Make sure you bet that chicken. Make sure you put your parlays in, but gamble responsibly. That's what, and if you have a gambling problem, 1-800-GAMBLER. But uh, it's all about DraftKings. Nobody's better than DK. And it's super easy for first timers to get started. Try betting on something simple like picking a team to win. Go to DraftKings Sportsbook app, select your team, and place your first bet. And this is going to be DraftKings' biggest college football season to date. Enjoy the ride. Now, all the way through the expanded playoffs, for all the newbies getting into college spirit, here's something extra special. New DraftKings customers bet $5 and get $250 in bonus instantly. It don't get no better than that. You bet five and you get 250 in bonus instantly. Score big with DraftKings all college football season long. Download DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code Gilly. G-I-L-L-I-E. Download the app right now. Right now. DraftKings right now. And use the code Gilly for new customers to get that 250 on a $5 bet. And it's just like that. DraftKings. I'm representation of that environment, bro. That is, my mine's is not, I only know what I know. Like, I'm only writing what I know right. at that point. When they choose that, they're choosing something that's a little different than saying, fuck this, our food. They're afraid, look, when the feds come in and the indictment, they said that they, they beat the case. Yeah. It beat no case. You never did nothing. Right. You never did nothing. They put them in the indictment because when you gave them 50,000, they said you was money laundering. But there was no money laundered. They didn't give them the dirty 50000 You gave them the 50000 because you And he said, leave him alone because he's my fool. Yeah. And when I keep having friction with them, he goes, let's kill this little yeah. Because he keep getting in the way, and I'm now I'm fool. Yeah. There was no money laundering, bro. Man, I tell you, he beat the case, and he said by the time he was done with his case, he owed $2 million. How did you beat? How did you win? You never did nothing. They gave him a case. Nigga went to trial, pretty much to trial with a legal aid attorney. 
Mm. A legal attorney had never been to trial. Because they couldn't help. There was no financial help or support for him because of, because of that. Right. So the, the government is saying, get these out of the way trying to help by giving them this the case. And they'll struggle to beat that case while we're, giving, while we're taking care of what we need to take care of with this. And it gets him out of the way. And as soon as he's going, I appear to be the bully. They look at me like I'm a bully because I accept what, what just went down. They don't teach you to accept that. Right. Question, who in New York City was rocking for you when everybody was trying to blackball you in the city? Who stood out and said we f Mr. C. That's it? Mr. C created the first show that I did, downtown Manhattan. And, and look, even when the funny came out because he told me he was a little foolish, I'm like, I'm not involved in any personal choices. That's what he do when he, on his personal time. That's his personal time. I was always there for him. Even his funeral, I paid for his funeral. Just look, every time my man, look, he showed up at a time that there was no, it was so crucial. I was so fed up, like, when they pick up Bobby and Rowdy and them, Shot Money and them is around that situation. They thinking that they are like, oh, I know what this is, this G unit. Because they seen the group and they seen the, the hammers around and at that point, I was doing shows. I made it to a point I was doing a show for $8,000. One of the premier records was uh, I Can Love You Better. Yeah. My version of LL Cool J's yeah, record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did everybody's record over. Over everybody. So I was doing this shit and it was like, my targeted audience is, is the neighborhood. So I'm not making a commercial hit record out of it. I'm, doing, I'm taking your commercial hit and making a record that the hood understands. Yeah. You said you could love her better. I said she's after my cheddar. You know, and it's a different, a distorted perception of everything that was done for commercial purposes that I'm doing. It's what R&B music is now. R&B is singing a record a rapper would say. Uh -huh. He's singing a version of an R&B record yeah, the that a rapper would, would say. Absolutely. Let me ask right you this: the, the, in this day and time. Is there any, with, with technology and how you can build your own fan base, is there any such thing as gatekeepers right now? Look, look we have people that have strong influence and it's because they've grown in our culture and the, you, the new versions of them made them important. When 21 Savage comes out and he's Red Rum, if you look at the War Angel LP, you see Red Rum. When Pop comes out and you see his version of Many Men, when you're on game time, you got a whole group of niggas over there you know, they know who you are. Yeah. They would like to knock you off because you mean something to this side. Yeah. It's easy why you would be feeling like many men want death on you, right? So these records connect because the circumstances have changed, but the feelings haven't. Right. Time has gone by, but it's the same. Right. You know, and the outlook, even when I talk, I talk to the young boys, I'm like, yo, so what's, what's up with them? He's like, oh, no, nah, homie, those are ops, right? And I'm like, so what happened? He's like, nah, nah. What it means is he don't even, he don't, he don't know. know. He, don't he don't know why they beefing. No, he don't even know, but he know those is not cool. That's his information that he received. That's the way he feel about it. And it's, it's real to him because they gonna act off it. And I go, oh, okay, okay. I ain't gonna pry. Because your path is your path. I know it wasn't tough. It wasn't tough to me. I'm gonna tell you, that's a good kid. Like, a good kid. He could have woke up yesterday and decided he won't, he all the way in. Uh huh. I'm not telling you not to look at him like I look at him. I'm only saying I see him that way because of how he was around me yeah. and his upbringing. Right. And he'll look at me and go, and not even know how to behave that way. Right. Now, with you, there may be a different story. You see what I'm saying? And it may be the incident that turns him into a tough yeah, for real. Yeah, but that, yeah, and yeah. I'm like, it is what it is. Yeah. And I look and I go, oh shit. <laughs> I didn't see him doing that, but he did that. Right, like, right. The reason I asked you about the gatekeeping, the reason I asked you about who blackballed you, because I just be one of these young kids to know that you don't have to fuck with 50 Cent. You don't have to fuck with this person. You don't have to, and you can make it and to be as big as 50 Cent. Oh, well, listen, look, somebody gotta be next. Somebody gotta be nice. But then away from that, they gotta they gotta come in with a significant and some significance of something that's driving it. 
that's real. You see what I'm saying? Like, think, don't think about me. Think about the barbershop and the beauty salon. And how they were communicating about it because it was so intense to them. It was so real. Real talk. You see what and I'm saying? And that's going on all over the world. Yeah, that's everywhere. And it's like, yo, nah, you better be knowing what's going on around you. Because it can just happen and you're just there. If, you don't, if you're not aware of it, you're not going to feel what's important and what's not important. Yeah. And make the right decisions for yourself. Yeah. I look, I look at things like, I'm like, yo. Bro, I could be so removed from it that I don't have to be conscious of it. The f*** am I doing talking to these people? Girl? Right. Right, you going, no, nah, I don't have to. Right. At all, nigga. Right. Let me tell you, I can get on some J yes. Tell you to pass the great for Yeah. And don't deal. even be around, John. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you gotta think about it. You go, if you go, we've seen that transition and, and that importance is like, let's pick places to make those places important. I look and see what are they doing? Are they doing things? It was seeing you guys have an interview with Jay Prince and them following. Mm -hmm. Take off. They were so sensitive at that point. I can see your uncomfortability in some of the things that you said, like the, some of the answers and response, because you, it means you're conscious of what is actually happening. Right. Around you, another person will ask that it's an interview. If you're not from the environment, you haven't been subjected to it, so you don't understand what you're saying, and you're just saying some shit. Right. And you look, you look at YouTube, there's no ramifications for the shit that they do. I've seen myself say shit I didn't say. Right. All over the shit. I'm looking like, oh, shit. when I say that, I'm clicking the shit to see what I said if I said it. I'm like, what the fuck I said that for? Look, you didn't say it. I never said that. But they make what they want it to be Absolutely. on YouTube, and it's small enough for you not to have an issue because if you address it through the, the legal system, then look, I, I'll do it for recreational purposes. Legal. When they agitate me, I'll send the lawyers. How much you pay for lawyers a year? Just, just I spend a million dollars a year, anyway. I spent twenty-four million dollars. In my career so far, I can't wait till I get rich. Just, just on lawyers. Just if anybody with you. I spent $24 million in my career on legal fees. I have general counsel. I don't have a, I don't have a manager. I need you to manage me for. I've done every deal a hundred times that I would be doing like for, for me as a music artist or for what I need you to do that for. Get some of my money. Yeah. They all want to work at a percentage, and you go a percentage of me. Like you didn't build this, I built it. So I'm just gonna pay counsel. Right. That's like even I was in develop management companies yeah. to help the artists out because I'll say you what you kill. Let your money because they you know who they put as a manager someone they trust. Someone is not gonna steal the money from you, girl. Imagine because they meet in the audience before they meet in the record company. If you we we this was hot last night. We put it on Spotify, Apple, iTunes. Take all, boom, this thing. Yeah. Out of nowhere, he starts to become somebody in the culture because the kids is following it. It's cool. He don't have time. If that shit happened the first time we wrote a good record, we wouldn't be prepared for it. Right. Right. The nigga, you know, came to me. I was, uh, what's the name? Sound like Future. Um, he uh, sounded like Future. I got clothes panda, in the Panda, Panda, Panda. Yeah, yeah, I got bras yeah, in the yeah, yeah, da, 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 da. I met with him before he did the deal with Kanye, you know. Had him at the office. I'm like, yo, so let me, yo, let me hear the other records you got. And he's like, I said, that's it. And the shit was so hot that he had it, I was struggling. And I was like, nah, I can't get that, that money. Let them give him whatever they're gonna yeah, give. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know who I was you when I made one record. Plan, when I made one record, I didn't know how to make the next one. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. So if you have the distraction of a record, you move around, you start seeing all these bad You done been married three times this weekend. Yeah, uh, so if this is done happen, you done got all this confused. You like, what happened? What's your next record? I don't know. I think I like her. Uh -huh. I think I love her. Uh -huh. You thinking other shit that wasn't even in your thought process prior to that hit. Right. So where do you find a hit record? Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. We're not on the same thought pattern that you was when you made the hit. I got bras in the limit. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, this is fine. I would ask the radio DJs. I had the radio DJs around. I'm like, yo, so let me ask you a question, right? Because I was doing the branches. Right? Yeah. 
And this is my way of making sure that I gave them something back. I've never asked a DJ in anywhere, any territory, anywhere, and I've, I've never had an argument with a DJ outside of DJ Clue because he's a right. He's just, he just did some shit that make me look at him like that. But outside of that, I've never had an issue with a DJ. Period. Right? And it's because I need them. They still matter. Huh? How much do DJs matter right now? They still. They now look. The kids, the young demo, don't give a fuck about what you're talking about when we're talking about DJs. Because their streaming is gonna be, it's gonna happen yeah. before the DJ plays the record. Right. right. When you do play it, I'm already hot, nigga. Right. You playing it because I got an audience. But they're still important, though. Because it is important. They gave us. It doesn't make it to the mainstream if they yeah. don't touch it. Yeah, they're important. But by the time it's happening organically, yeah. when it's happening for the first time. Let me say something. I seen I seen a Ross take a shot at you a couple weeks ago about a girl that you're not even with no more. And then, what is it with you and Ross that's just been going on for so long? I spent it to you, right? Nothing else works for him outside of mentioning me. When things get bad, you mention me. It gets covered further. You see TMZ is a 50 Cent said this is going to be bad for Irv Gotti's career. I get covered across the board. They get covered on the hip hop blogs. It is what it is. And you watch because I have nothing else to say. You just see it happen periodically as it goes. You know, yeah. you see that big white elephant? Yeah. That property he lives at? <laughs> it costs more than the nightclubs. He's in the nightclubs. Yeah. We know what they can give you. They can't pay you more than they can pay you because the room can't hold enough people for them to give you the money to, to stay there. You can stay into your squatter, holding on to the leg of the chair that they're moving. But that's what it is. It's just a part of presentation. Yeah. Come on, bro. You can see this. You don't need me to say that you know this. Yeah. Look at it. What kind of rich cut his own grass? Why are you out there cutting your own grass? <laughs> You're trying to save money, nigga? You don't want to pay for the lawn to get cut, huh? Let me ask you. The AC broken in the Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What do it take for a person to shoot a film? A clean film. It ain't got, not, not your film. To shoot a clean film, that's just, that's just. Don't shoot a film. Shoot a series. A film requires a star. Okay. We gotta make the money back in three weekends. We need 30, we only got 30 seconds to make people wanna watch it. The first 30 seconds. The 30 second trailer that they the put trailer. out. A minute and 30 seconds. We got one minute and 30 seconds to make everybody wanna watch this shit. Right. So they gotta see somebody and go, oh, okay, yeah, cool. I wanna, I wanna check that out. If you make the series, we watch this shit and go, nah, this shit is good. We've seen some series catch traction on YouTube, different things that make the series, bro. It doesn't require stars, it requires talent. Serious. When people are authentic, they can be playing a character that they can play because they notice, they notice behavior. Yeah. And the one and thing I said, you made stars. That's it, they didn't know, look, bro, I was going, what is wrong with these people? They was acting like, I said, you number one African, I've been number one African American Latina household for 10 years. Multiple shows. I talked to Tyler about it. I watched, he's still putting up number one, number one, number one, number one. Oh, damn. He'll send it to me in advance. I said, for your eyes only, don't even show nobody. Okay. This nigga got more. This nigga got more. He got more of this shit. And you, you see me start doing things. Since we got here, I didn't even mention the uh, 50 Cent Action, my channel. It'll come, I got 18 hours of premium content that I'm gonna run through there. So you go. It's just gonna be like Netflix or somewhere. Like it's gonna be. 1800 hours, it's free television. It's called 50 Cent Action. It's ad driven. So there's no fee for you to have that app on your television. So I can just, I can just, just download. click like Netflix, it's downloaded onto your TV and it's free. And you got the ad, the ad revenue is paying for everything. Power, everything's there. Mm. So, so being the fact that I could, I could count like at least 
four stars you done made uh -huh. from from t TV series. Uh -huh. But then when you sit back and you see like Ghost, Amari Hardwick say, I ain't get paid what I was supposed to get paid. And how that make you feel? You know, look, look, he, make, he doesn't mean that to me. Right? He'll send a DM, y'all. I didn't mean for that to come out like them turning it around into something else. And I go, but that it still is what it is. They're still saying what they're saying, right? At the end of the day, Ghost was supposed to die where I died. Oh, you extended it. I extended it. Yeah. I told her she was planning to kill him. See, when people have success for the first time, sometimes they need it to be their own. The problem with working with 50 Cent is it's 50 Cent's show. The writers, multiple writers in the room, real talented, bro. Building this shit, putting it together. There's no one, no one person responsible for a hit TV show. It's multiple people having a moment. The actors are bringing the characters to life. The writers are making the, it's coming together, right? And it it's all starts collective. with the writers. Right, but it you starts on the right. We ain't got nothing. Don't matter. So how many writers you have in the room? Eleven. Eleven writers. That's the difference because all you recognize is a showrunner. You're only looking at the showrunner was eleven people responsible for what you just said. Right. So you look and go, when, when I'm there, it gets uncomfortable at points when it goes on for a long time, a lot of success, and it keeps saying 50 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent. They gotta be comfortable with it. Like Peacock, right now, the number two highest rated show with the uh, TikTok murders. I never said this stat to nobody because number two is the first to mm -hmm. lose. I don't care about number two. Yeah. I like number oh, one. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But it's still the second highest rated they've seen in yeah. that 30 day time period. And that company is going to, next time I pitch something that's a docuseries, it's going to say, yes, we don't even need to think about it. Put it right here. Mm -hmm. How do a pitch go? Is it, is it a deck or is it? Sometimes they make decks and stuff like that, but I don't pitch like, you look, most people pitch and they need a show, they need a show to work. That's all they need to be comfortable in life, a producer. One show. One hit show that's a long running show. And you got four of them right now, huh? I got 34 shows across 10 different networks, but four of them are actively running on, on stars. And this is the only reason why I would commit. I, look, there's nobody else that could commit to this, to Shreveport thing, it wouldn't make sense for them. There's $27 million in that building that I put over there. Alone, just the studio. Everything that I bought away from that, is shit that I bought just because I needed, I need them to feel what you feel, what, what we feel right now. Yeah. Here. So it's not a bad place to go. In the process, it makes the place cool. It's just, it's just, if I can't have a place that, the, the favorite, my favorite things to eat, these are the places I would go eat in New York City. Say less, Lagos, yeah. different spots. We would hit these spots. This is why they're here yeah. for the weekend. Yeah. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by PFL, the Professional Fighters League. Bellator Champion Series, San Diego goes down Saturday. September 7th, live on Max. The card features a lightweight title between Usman Nurmagomedov and Alexander Shapley. Usman looks to build on the legacy of his cousin Khabib. Don't miss the action. Saturday, September 7th at 8 p.m. on Max. For those looking to attend in person, tickets are available on AXS.com. So if you're looking to be in the building, in San Diego, the tickets are on AXS.com. And this is this will be one hell of a fight. We already know. We all know that Bellator puts on some of the best MMA bouts that you can possibly see. So from the Bellator Champion Series, do not forget, it's going down September 7th, Saturday, live on Max. Tune in. And if you want to be in the building... Let's not forget, get your tickets on AXS.com, Saturday, 8 p.m. on Max.
tune in. Right. Man, I was worth a game. I'm watching the sh- They're not, you don't always, I'm even the pieces. The clips and sh- that's going on and shit down. Oh. Personality wise, they can't match up with you. Know. Thank you, man. It can't. I'm talking about the part where y'all just f-ing around. You see what I'm saying? Not it's something serious to yeah, change me yeah. up. Just that that is the better part of watching it and the thing that, that creates uh I'd rather go there than to go talk to somebody who don't understand what I'm talking about. Right. Real yeah, like you look and you're going. The fact that they would pick, when I'm, I'm pointing out the Jay Prince interview, when I was there, I don't know a lawyer, anyone that would advise you to speak at that point, them choosing to speak on your platform says that they felt safe. Right there. Because you're not supposed to talk about nothing under those circumstances. You understand what I'm saying to you? Not one thing. So when I sit there, I'm like, and there's no control of what the questions you ask, or, uh, or how you react off, off guard, and it's on film, so it's, it, people can judge for themselves how they feel about it, you know what I'm saying? And that's, you know, certain things I look at and go, it almost may be, it may turn into, when they're trying to cancel people the place that they have to go, so they're not canceled. Where the f do you go if that happens? Right. All right. I pointed out religion, I pointed out politics. Those are the two things you saw Kanye around in. He stepped on a landmine. Mm-hmm. First, he said he thought slavery was like accepted or intended because we went on for so long. And got away with that because black folks was looking like, what the f? We didn't even know how to respond to that shit. Like, he said, that was so crazy, right? Then he said, some shit about the Jews. They don't have a reason to forgive you, man. Their loved ones are lost. I got a phone call from someone like I was working with. She won an Academy Award for Spotlight, Nicole Rockman. She was crying on the telephone, Gilly. She said, you're not going to do a school with this ass, are you? Because he was doing the Donda schools. And he was saying he wanted to do, because I was doing a lot of stuff in Houston with the independent school district. And he was like, yo, maybe we build a school together. And I was like, yeah, yeah, man, when you die down, yeah. you hot, nigga. You got your yeah. fans all on me. Right? No, no. I'm just thinking in my head, Gilly, it can't be a bad thing to build a school, right? Right, right? No matter how you say it. But we got to wait. All right, we got to wait till this cool off, man. What the fuck are you talking about? Right now, don't bring me this down. He calls me, you're not going to build a school with this boy. I'm like, no. No, I'm not going to build a school. I said that we not that there's no plans for the school. I just said it because he said this. But she was crying on the phone because she was really hurt by what he said. And there's no apology. Like, where's the apology at for her individually if she's hurt individually? There's no way to fix it, that shit. So I stay away from that. That was my lesson in, in that. Because I know certain, certain areas you can tap into that you can't repair it. Like, I don't know how a way to repair that yeah. for that person. Like, you know what I mean? Let me ask you this. What advice you have? We have a hydration drink called Pure Fuel, right? Uh-huh. Um, you know, it's a fish you drink at a 76 inch fish you drink at a uh, Chicago Sky. What advice could you give us from having vitamin water? Uh-huh. What type of game can you give us? And how did you go about with the, the vitamin water thing? And how put it you... on the table, first of all. We ain't got it right here. We don't got it. We got to put it on the table. Uh-huh. When we're doing the interviews and shit like that, because just having it present, your lifestyle, that's what they want to follow. You got to start the podcast because of your podcast. It ch- like, I, they want that. Like, whatever they see you having, not, not in... You like when, when we put it on a commercial, like a, a, like that, it gets the least amount of likes when it's a professional picture. Absolutely. When it's casually in your lifestyle, they look at it and go, "What's that?" Uh-huh. You'll see it, the shirt you had on. They'll see the choice. This is the perfect choice. Where I'm from, a, a white shirt says, "I'm clean." Uh-huh. That's a statement. You made a statement. Not everybody where we from is clean. 
When we decide something to design, this is a product. A cost. We know the difference in the cost of a regular pro club white t-shirt and a, and a Prada shirt, right? And that's, it's both a choice, but it's an actual cool option every time. Just being clean is enough. I decide I want to do this, throw some fresh plates and I'm glad to go out like this. Well, it's hot as a mother out here. It's 120 degrees out this yeah. But it, yeah, it's an yeah. option. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're going to see that and people make the choice. How did you get into vitamin water? How did you get in? I, look, I, wanted, I was walking down the aisle in the supermarket and I saw spring water. And the spring water was two sixty nine, and it was from Poland Spring. And then I saw spring water, and it was for fifty nine cent. And I was like, I know I wouldn't know the difference. I want to sell water. Uh, I wouldn't care if I was seventy nine cent in the middle. But then we stumbled over vitamin water at the time. It was privately owned. It was in Queens, and they understood the momentum. To the oh, music. so it was already existing. Yeah, you, it was in existing. You went in for equity. Yeah, when I got in, and, and it had. Uh, they was providing stock options for employees at points, so I was able to buy some of the options from other employees. Because people who go to work nine to five, they live in the now. Yeah. Right. If you say there's a deal right now where I can move to a new house and Junior can have his own room and... But yeah. five years from now, it car. could be this. Nah. Give me now. Give me now. Yes. How long did it take to pop from when you walked into it till you sold it, till y'all sold it? I think it was two and a half years after we got involved, but and the momentum from, of me publicly at that point was monstrous. Like, yeah, look, before I came out with Get Rich or Die Trying, the most I seen African-American male artists sell as a solo artist yeah. was Tupac or Eyes On Me. It was a double CD. Six million. So, yeah. Yep, six million copies. They made it a diamond record, 12 million copies. But, and, and that six, it was like at five at that point and grew to six at that point. So now if you look, when you see me come and do 13 million records Damn. on the Marshall, on Get Rich or Die Trying, it's a monster of a price. 10 at that in the early stages, like so, and then slow goes the other three. Like Trump will uh, get shot and it go up 250%. And many men will play again because it's relevant to many men killing them right the now. Yeah, it still works. Like it's because those circumstances are not going to go away. It's just going to be someone new understanding the feeling now. Yeah understanding the motivation and why you wrote the record. Like, and then, then it goes, oh no. <laughs> it's a whole different feeling to it, a whole different context because they watched that, but the same scenario. Now, you said Master P, you said Russell Simmons, who three other black guys in the game that's big that helped you? No, help, uh, Jay, Jay's definitely. Jay helped you? Yeah. How did As a you? competitor. Explain it. Yeah, because he never was someone that would you communicate with that you're like friends with the person. But I always respected him because he he, he was never a, an actual competitor in actual fact. He was someone who was a competitor through perception. He continued to sustain his perception of him through errors of artists. Ja was selling more records than Jay-Z. Yeah, I know. Juvenile thinks so more records than Jay-Z. Juvenile so much records. A lot of Game and sold more records than him in the period that he still sustained some sort of cool. Yeah. About that sort of, nigga. Yes. Like that God. he was able to, to hold on to that. And then that, you know, feeling that way, I mean, it's a part of how you carry yourself. Mm-hmm. When you perceive yourself highly, yeah. you can project that energy and people can agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so Jay, that's number three. Yeah, Jay. And then, um, who else? Uh, Nasa P, Russell, Jay. Two more. In hip hop, just in the culture, black folk, yeah, any just, black folk, just to watch. Um, I uh, I learned from Oprah. Okay. Damn. Oprah, because she she all television shows have targeted demographics. Yeah. An audience that if you look at Oprah Winfrey's audience, it was middle aged white woman. Because yeah. the way she's abused. Even though they escaped the fact that she was an African-American woman in front of them. Yeah. Because she was so successful, when she said things and it was the way they thought, they said, oh, I think like a billionaire. And they make, cause she's, once we put you a billionaire, and then you say things and you think exactly the way they think, they go, oh, she's a billionaire. She's amazing. I love Oprah. Yeah. So it's harder to go against people 
to connect to that demographic because that's our actual audience. It's easy to smash Russell. It's easy to smash Michael Jackson. It's easy to smash. When they f up, you put, you're dead, nigga. They're going to hit you with the kill shot. <laughs> you understand? But <laughs> we didn't see that for Weinstein. We didn't see that for her chef. The chef that was, you know, that was cooking, they had some issues and shit like that. We didn't see different things. And I, I kind of saw Get Ready Kid Russell, and I was like, we ain't got nobody left. Who, who the last person that helped you? I, that'll be five. The last person. Help me. Um, look, look, these are people that I learned from from a distance, too. It's not like that I Ain't actually nobody talk helped to them, man. They they to Dr. Dre and Eminem. Man. Yeah, they're, those, they yeah. helped me. Really, the only, I could only point to those two people because creatively they got it. So you got to understand. He came in the game. He was the outlaw, man. Yeah. like Nobody I'm, wanted to help him until he dropped from that ceiling upside down and that shit. Did the numbers. Oh shit! Now then like, the motherfuckers the holes and change of the pendulum. So now the motherfuckers was with them. They willing to fuck with you now because have, you bigger. How did the Eminem first encounter go when he first got with you? It was wild. It felt like. What did he, it how did like, it happen? Remember that show that had Punk on MTV? Yeah, punk, I yeah. thought they had cameras and it was gonna come out and said you've been. Where punk. was your at? What city was your? I at? was in California. He flew me to LA, right? I came out. Yeah. I was so. Bugged out from the experience that I came through the airport with the vest on. The vest on. For, I, I'm lucky I took the, the shot plate out the front of the joint because when I I came through it didn't. But the lawyer that I had with me, they took me to him. I get there, he like, yo, give me a hug, you feel the vest and shit. He's like, yo, this is gonna be the biggest, right? He's like, yo, I'm so excited, yo, that. It made me question whether what was happening was happening was right. Because I just wasn't so used to, it's so It felt so good that it couldn't be like right. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yo, nah. And when I left that meeting, I didn't want him to feel like he brought a problem. So I wouldn't say anything about Ja Rule. Yeah. I kept it, I didn't say one thing. How long did the meet last? It was like when I met him the first night I met him, he was he had an event. It was the Marshall Mathers LP just came out the first week. He sold 1.7 million records. And he was so excited about me that I'm looking like, you serious? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, yo. And by the time I got back, and I would I would never say anything about John until the first time I said something about him, John made a mistake and said something about Haley. When he said something about Haley, he thought that they made some sort of kind of connection when they was getting high or some shit like that. And I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck made him think like this? Like, it was, and I'm like, it was a Friday. Friday evening, him didn't record that Friday. I recorded that Friday, that Saturday, that Sunday. He came back. I had a full CD, Automatic Gunfire. It was the mix, the, my whole mixtape, Automatic Gunfire, was done Monday morning. He was listening, he was going, Joe, when did y'all get a chance to... All this shit was this weekend. Like I, was like, I was dying to do that. I just didn't want him to feel like he brought a problem because I know he didn't understand the severity of what, what who, who I am is. You know, like it's it's a little different. Like for me, it's like consequences is you dead, nigga. It's not enough to talk about. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he didn't quite understand that. He was just, this is he was listening to the material. He was listening to the music. Yeah, it's hot. It's just hot. How much money did he give you for that first deal? I got a million dollars. Cash. They add the taxes. Mm -hmm. The only person that pointed out that a million dollars was no money was Damon Dash, and he has no money now. Mm. Mm. It, I only no, I only felt that, you know, because he said, well, oh, that ain't no money. Like you, after you get your watch, your chain, and you look out for the homies and you do this, then it's nothing. Right? And I was like, nigga, I'm from 134th Street. I mean, now this is a lot of money. Right. <laughs> I think I hit the lotto. Right. Yeah. Are you gonna say it's no money? Like, hey, it was, and I just never forgot that because of how it felt. Was that the only offer you got? Were any other labels offered you? I met with everybody. I met with Clue, Desert Storm, all of them. It's because I wanted them to say they was doing a deal with me. First thing they did when they came in, Skin came in with him. 
He said, yo, we talk to the wolves. They said, it's OK to talk to you. You think I do a deal with a nigga, they got to ask somebody if it's OK. What other labels you done to deal with? What other name brand labels that, 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 that offered you a deal? Dino. Dino the Valley Universal. Dino Valley Universal. They offered me a deal for the whole collective. Like they wanted my solo album and then the G-Unit albums. Yeah. Because I started making the tapes. But I didn't make the tapes until LL was just talking about this recently. He was talking about uh, Paradise. I wrote the chorus to Paradise. Charmel sung the the, uh, the reference vocals and then A. Marie got it and it turned into what it what it is now. But I don't know why he was, was struggling with the, the idea of people feeling like I wrote for him. Because I, about writing for LL Cool J, bro. Like, that nigga was so far ahead of my career. Right. <laughs> like, I love LL Cool J. Like, I don't want him to ever feel like I want something or discredit him in any way. Like, that, that nigga was like, like dog, you the oh, man. Like, yeah, like, dude, was my mama said, knock you out. Like, dude, oh, don't <laughs> with me, man. Don't make me feel like that because I don't need to feel like that. There's, there's nothing in it for me right. to take credit for anything that he's done. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, what? Nah, but I did write records over for him. Yeah. I, I felt like his his his, his uh A and R person let him pick records and his ear was too mature. Yeah. You picking old school shit, this is what's working right now. Right. Listen to these music, do your version of that to this music. Right. And people over here Something relate different. to it. They can do that dance that they're doing right, right. now, that same bop to right. that right. to that joint. Right. You just went on tour. After all these years, and you sold a shitload of shitload of uh, tickets. Yeah, my audience is rich. Your audience is what? Yeah, we're rich. If you was in college in 2003, when I came out, and the music came on, and everybody agreed to have a good time, people disagree on everything, right? But they agree to have a good time when the music come on. We can't tell that they don't like each other, right? You had this experience, this girl, she just got a license and a whole, a whole control of her party. She right. decided she'd give it to who she wants to. Ooh. And she decided she wanted to give it to you. It's the greatest moment of your life, right? right? Now look, when this is happening, and you connected to me, because musically, my music is playing. Later, everything that we do at one point in our life, we do it differently at another point, mm -hmm. right? So let's say you would go to a sports bar, or you would go to a nightclub, or you would go to the drink you would have at dinner. You start to have that wine cellar or that bar in your house, and you have that drink in the privacy of your home. Because socially, if you went to the nightclub, you would be hanging out with your kids. <laughs> I look, when I look, I saw this last tour, I saw a bad I was like, oh, this is bad. Girl, the only difference between this tour and my other tours is when I looked this tour, I said, Dad, where's your mother? Yes. <laughs> Where the f is your mother? That little pretty, where's your mother? I know your mother is man. Your mother look good at them. <laughs> look, cause that little is 20, 23 years old, 24 years old. Get the f Your ready. mother your gotta mother? be fine. Your mother gotta, your mom is ready. Yeah. And she know I've been winning for so long, she should win with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, we appreciate you. We gotta get out of here, Renee. We gotta get out of here. that, man, make sure y'all cop. Everything, everything that's you got going on, man. Yeah, man. Check out all the series. Brands everything that's going yeah, on. Man. 50 Action is coming when? When is 50 Action coming? It's, it's coming it's free. Now. It's all coming free now. content. Free TV. Free, free TV. Right. 50 Action. Boom. Get with it, man. Ain't nothing this can do, and it's just like that. Right. Yeah.